It's really interesting that the contracts between the city and the NCAA to host the tournament, you know, this is a big deal. All the wheels right. are in motion, everything's in place, but they were just signed on Friday night. Yeah, lots of details to finalize after that January decision to move all of March Madness to Indy. Our Mary Mills got those contracts and now for you tonight lays out what it took to score the big dance. The NCAA now has exclusive rights to the Indiana Convention Center where teams will practice basketball in Lucas Oil Stadium where they'll play through the end of March Madness. That means the NCAA calls the shots on just about everything happening in those two venues which are run by the city's Capital Improvement Board. We asked the CIB for the contracts to see what's involved. The cost for the NCAA to rent the Convention Center initially set at just over $1.2 million then dropped to 84000 Money for things like setting up the 12 practice courts. The contract for Lucas Oil Stadium shows no rental fee, with the CIB paying for everything from ticket takers and security to a first aid room and cleanup. You might remember the court going in. It belongs to the NCAA, but the stadium workers assembled it. The CIB also responsible for all basketball equipment including state-of-the-art scoreboards, timing devices, game clocks, and a full-time production staff. The city gets all proceeds from food, beverages, and catering, plus most parking revenue, though the NCAA gets 300 spots for charter buses and 400 for personal vehicles. You may be thinking the NCAA is getting a pretty good deal, but for years, other large events like the Super Bowl and NRA convention have also received incentives to come here. When tourism officials announced Indy would host all of March Madness, they predicted a healthy nine figures in economic impact, or 100 million plus. And that was before the decision to allow limited fans. A big bounce, especially for downtown hotels, bars, restaurants, and the city in general. And Mary says that includes a big jump in revenue from hospitality taxes, especially the innkeeper's tax and taxes on food and beverage.